All right, we're standing here with Tom in front of his 1951 M38 Willys that he got from his dad. And Tom, you only drove this thing one time when you were a kid, right? Yeah. yeah. And did your dad allow you to drive no, it or did you no. take it from him? Took it out. He took it out. And what'd you break? The overdrive. You broke the overdrive. Had a bar going to overdrive with electric solar. Which on. means it only works in two wheel drive. But anyway, the gist of the story is when he went for a ride with his dad later on, and the overdrive didn't work. At that point, your dad said, you're never driving my Jeep again, he pretty much. He didn't say anything. He didn't say, he wasn't too happy with you, huh? No. no. So. Then he I was in the Navy, I was gone now. Yep, so now you got the Jeep, you fixed it up, and we are at my shop in Auburn, and you live where? Tacoma, Washington. Lives in Tacoma, Washington, and how many years have you been on the Jeepers Amberie? Five. So this is his fifth year, so every year he hooks it up behind his F-150 here and he gets in it and he drives all the way down flat towing this thing from Tacoma, Washington, taking his time. And you sleep in the pickup sometimes, huh? Probably two nights in the pickup, one night in the hotel. Two nights in the pickup, one night in the hotel. Yeah. And uh, he comes down to Georgetown, gets set up and he takes this thing over the Rubicon Trail. And you know, this is the way it used to be and this is the way it should be. Um, what's the farthest you've taken this Jeep, Tom? Uh, this one? Yeah. South Dakota. South Dakota. And you've taken another one farther than then, Pennsylvania. that. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So he's going all the way across the country, flat towing these old flat fenders. You only have flat fenders? Yep. Only flat fenders. How many you got? Three. Three flat fenders. My kind of guy. So this one with the Studebaker V8. Um, so he towed it down here. We saw him on the Rubicon. He drove this thing flawlessly all the way through the Rubicon. The only issue with the slight overheating just mean you got to stop and take a break, right? Yep. Have a little lemonade. Yep. Smoke a cigar and then get back in. That's right. So uh, he's on his way back up to Washington. I told him to stop by so we could kind of walk around it. So has the Studebaker 289 and what transmission? T15. T15 with a big pin Dana 18? Right. And then a, can, big hole. is it a worn overdrive? Worn overdrive. Worn overdrive. And what gear ratio are you running? 538. 538 gears. It's got a floater kit on the rear. And what locker in the rear? Detroit. Detroit locker. And then does the front is a Model 25? Model 25 with Spicer axles and uh, power lock. So the Model 25 here is obviously closed knuckle, but uh, you went ahead and put disc brakes on it, right? That right. looks like uh, like Monte Carlo disc brakes. 70, 78 Jeep. 78 Jeep disc brakes and then check this out here. This is something really cool. So these tie rods are the military tie rods. Right. Now he, he cut them in half and what'd you sleeve them with? Just uh, uh, solid, solid uh, Mild rod. steel. Yeah. yeah. So he cut them in half, slid a rod in the inside, made it fit perfect, did a nice V weld, weld them back together. So you're not bending any tie rod or drag lengths on this no. thing. No. Um, Oh, you could have hit it hard enough. If you hit it hard enough, you could. So this Jeep, one of my favorite things, I got to show you this, and we talked about it a little bit. Um, this thing has a heater installed, and this is serious. So look right here in the fender well. So you see the sheet metal molded in, heater motor. This loops around. Now, if you look underneath, he's missing a piece, but it came off. So right here was a little piece of flex line. Sheet metal comes down, goes into this plenum, then it comes right up under the seat. And uh, we'll show you this in a little bit, a little bit better, but take a look at the floor. And this is the air intake. So it's basically recirculating. Um, that has got to be the cleanest, uh, best flat fender he heater I've ever seen. And it's too hot, right, Tom? It's too hot. It's too hot. But- uh, You gotta have a valve to just to, to shut out the water. Yep. So right here, check this out. This is an M38, right? This is a battery box. So this used to be the battery box. Now it's under the hood. And look at how clean that wiring is. And you redid all the wiring yeah. when you got it from your dad, which yeah. his dad never gave it to him. It was passed through the family to him, and he ended up with it. Um, just a really cool Jeep all the way around. I mean, from, from the mirror to the wiring to the swing pedals. Um, did you build your own swing pedals on this thing? No, there's, there, were, there were only in it. Check this out. So th your dad put those swing pedals in, right. right? So in a flat fender, this is super hard to do. So those pedals are nice. They come all from underneath that Plymouth dash. Um, 
everything everything about this jeep screams america and the fact that you've taken your flat fenders all over the country yeah. Well, is I'm, awesome. Mine, I just use uh, 74 CJ5 pedals. Sandy yeah, pedal. 74 CJ5 pedals will fit in there good too. You gotta, you gotta massage the, the bracket tree a little bit, but. Yep, yep. Well, we're gonna go take this thing for a drive, and uh, we'll pop the hood and look underneath there as well. But uh, it's always a pleasure to have flat fenders come to the shop. That's a cool. Yeah. Put it on the one seat belts. That at least the way they're not in your way. He's got eye bolts, so you keep them in the back, and then you just click them on when you when you want to get your lady in the passenger seat and seat belt her in. But that way they're not in the way bouncing around when you're out there driving. I'm looking, I could see, uh, is that the fuel pump right there behind the back seat? That's the fuel pump right there. Yeah, so if you look right there, see the fuel pump just right out of the gas tank, right in a nice clean spot next to the second speaker. So the interior of this thing is one of my favorite parts. He's uh, tightened down the windshield frame so we can go get some highway speed, but Tom's not sure what year the steering wheel came out of or the column, but he did hand custom build this little spacer here and get a GM uh, blinker switch in there so the blinker works really nice and you don't have that big clamped on ugly piece of crap. Check that out. Swing pedals and the flat fender. No rust on the floor at all. And look at this dash. So his dad built this dash. So these are gauges. Are the gauges from a Plymouth, Tom? Uh, the Studebaker. Stud the, the Studebaker gauges. But check out this this uh, bull nose right here. So this bull nose is all leaded in and goes perfect all the way around the dash. And then his dad built these aluminum panels to, to roll over it. Um, I mean, one of the cleanest flat fender dashes I've ever seen. The switches are from a Studebaker. Switches are from a Studebaker and too. Use. Oh, and they even have the labels on them, huh? Yeah. And they then the like, keys from up. Studebaker. And check out that speaker. Is that speaker for the stereo? That's for the stereo? Yeah, and speaker around the seat there. Oh, no. Two speakers. How about that? Um, and then, obviously, you got the... Uh, he upgraded to the T15. And the reason you did T15 is you can bang first and reverse, right? Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And no, then... Rock it out of a hole. Yep, yep. And then 538 gears, but this would be your overdrive. And then this is a twin stick Dana 18. So, typical flat fender mm -hmm. stuff. So you, re you took the CJ5 springs, redrilled the center pin hole, right. bolted them in. That gives you a little bit more wheelbase, that too. That gives you 80 inches where it's supposed to oh, be. Oh, you're at 80 inches right now, huh? Cool. Yep. As you can see, this is a flat fender thing with full floater kit. You're always going to have a little grease and oil. I don't think I've ever seen this, a floater the seal's kit. The seal's back. The seal's yep. back in there. They all leak a little bit. All right. Well, uh, I say we take her for a ride. Let's see. The hood's latched. Battery box is tight. Let's see how good she fires up. A little pump of the gas. Look at that. Woo! Just runs like a beauty. Well, here we are. We're uh, just getting ready to go on a ride. With Tom. And uh, when you sit in here, I mean, I got tons of leg room. Got the heater grate right there. That dash is just amazing look how tucked up the swing pedals are one turn of the key and the engine's just running killer um, no rust in this thing whatsoever and uh 3a window frame or m38 window frame because it it doesn't have the vent here that's what makes it the m38 so uh we're getting ready go for a little ride All right, here we go. That only has to give it any gas. Oh, the thing runs absolutely perfect. I had no idea that this engine was such a great engine for a flat fender. And here we go. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, well, Detroit move. Here we are, overdrive. Yeah, it's so cold. Yep. We're cruising pretty good, and there is not one single vibration. Look at that, the sticks aren't even shaking, and we're going 60 miles an hour. Every one I've ever been in, the sticks are shaking, and, and we're not even in fourth overdrive yet. Just cruising. So this is my favorite part of this Jeep. So uh, what is this engine, Tom? Studebaker. Studebaker 289. Very nice Studebaker. What do you think uh, year it is? Uh, probably 50. Somewhere in the early 50s? Uh, no, late 50s. Late 50s, yeah. Uh, early 60s. So what Tom was saying is these engines generate a ton of torque. Um, they're pretty easy to keep cool. I mean, that's just a, almost like a standard flat fender radiator, huh? A Mustang. A oh, Mustang. Mustang yeah. radiator. So as you can see, uh, now your dad put this engine in, right? Right. And how long ago did he put the engine in this Jeep? Uh, early 60s. Early 60s. So this thing's been done since the 60s. Um, when Tom got it from his dad, he was only allowed to drive it once because he wrecked. I got it, I got it from my brother. Uh, your, yeah, your dad gave it to your brother first and then no, you ended up. No, my mom up. gave it to him. Your mom gave it to yeah, him? Yeah, because he died. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It went from one brother, he died, to another bro brother, and then I traded an old car for the Jeep. Nice. So when Tom got it, the engine was a little bit farther back. There wasn't enough clearance here. So you moved the engine forward an inch. Um, did you put the swing pedals in it as no, well? Swing pedals right. So sw it has swing pedals. You see brake master cylinder uh, on the firewall. It's a 12-volt system, 12-volt battery, but he still has a 6-volt starter in there, so the sucker turns over like a son of a bitch. And, uh, I put, I put a it, mechanical clutch. It had a it, hydraulic it, clutch. And it used to have a bell crank steering, and right down in here, his dad actually trimmed the exhaust manifold to fit the bell crank steering box. But when Tom got it, he changed it to regular U-joint style, machined the column. And if you look right up here, took the PTO winch off and put... A nice Saginaw power steering box up here, and of course, what every flat fender should have, the 8274 Warren winch. Um, anything else really there's, cool under here, Tom? There's the holes for the belt, there's holes the belt crank was on. Yeah, the belt crank was on, but if you take a look also, this Studebaker engine didn't have power steering, so it's got a Saginaw style steering pump that Tom built all the brackets and actually bolted it in on the fuel, uh, fuel pump block off plate. Um, and I mean, this thing just ran great over the Rubicon. Um, and you even have a hydraulic clutch in this thing, Tom? I did. I did. Yep. I, I put a mechanical clutch. Oh, you went back to mechanical now? Yeah. Just trying to keep it simple. Yeah, there's a rod already on the hole. Already drilled in the pedals, a hole for the rod. So did you did you put the louvers in or did your dad put the louvers in? I did that. Well, a buddy of mine did that. And oh, what, in the, what in the hell kind of carburetor is that? This I've never is, seen anything a, like that. Just a Stromberg side draft carburetor. I, I've never seen anybody put a side draft on a on a V8. Would that come on a Studebaker or is that grafted on? That would put, maybe come on there. That would come on it because this is the factory air cleaner and everything? Parts Man. of it. It sure does fit under the hood nice. And then this is the oil filter right on the top of the yeah. engine? I'm pretty sure when you change the oil filter, you're going to get a little oil down on the engine. It's the cleanest, cleanest oil change I ever do. It doesn't. All, all, all oh, the oil there's oil back in the crank. Oh, so there's no oil in it. No. So you unscrew it, it never leaks. No. Now that's something right there. That oil filter on the top, you never have to get underneath there and get dirty. You have to have your son crawl under there and undo yeah. the oil pan, huh? Yeah. So being that this thing's a M38, meaning it's the military edition of the of the flat fender, uh, 51, we think. They put a giant fill hole in here because you're out in the field and you need to be able, you need to be able to get gas in that that thing fast. So that's a big hole to hit. You know what they say? If it's a big hole, it's easier to hit. Boom! That's the M38. Oh look at look! Oh that is awesome. Yeah. So those that are, those are tough to find. 
So, so that way you, you, you can fill it up easier? Well, that don't, you don't spill as much gas. You that's, don't spill some, but That's the no gas. spill. They should tell the state of California about this. I think we should get this on those red plastic gas tanks that they, they won't let us get a nice fill nozzle. That's awesome. Well, I like the back of it. You got one gas can, one tire rack, got the panel hitch hooked up. It's super clean, not a bunch of junk hanging off. You don't have that big high up ice chest rack that everybody put on their flat fender. Do you drink beer when you're four wheeling? Not too much. You can... No? I noticed when I, when I got behind you on the trail, you were smoking a cigar and you were drinking something and lemonade. driving kind of with Lemonade, the... yeah. Yeah. Yo, lemonade, huh? Yeah. That's the way to do it. Stay hydrated. So back in the day, we oh, did back you... in the day we used to drink really stuff. <laughs> Serious alcohol abuse in them. Serious alcohol abuse. Yeah, that's. I think I'm still in that in that time oh, period yeah, we myself. Party, we party hard. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys like this old flat fender. Thanks for stopping Thank by, you, Tom. I mean, he he actually came into town and spent the night just to be here this morning to do this. So I, I hope get, I hope you have a safe ride yeah, home. I got tired of driving. They pushed me all the way from South Tahoe. Yep, yep. Right on my bumper. You know, I'm grinding 55 miles an hour. It's pretty fast in this thing. Well, I hope to see you next year on the oh, yeah. 70th Jeepers Jamboree. This will be a pinnacle on that trip. That's, so. uh, I'm going to go do as much as I can. All right. Well, until then, we'll see you next year.